It's Mike with Utastic. I'm here again at GoToConf 2015, and I'm standing here with Charles Nutter, who's giving a talk called Beyond the v uh, Beyond the JVM. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> I've been saying so many long titles today that trying to say a short title is, is yeah. actually more confusing. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Sure. Um, so, Beyond the JVM, what what is Beyond the JVM? Well, uh, this is a talk I've kind of been working on for a while, just to show people that the JVM is evolving and that a lot of the problems mm -hmm. that they may have heard about are starting to be solved. Uh, in this talk, I kind of took the approach of, of talking about the work we did on JRuby for the mm -hmm. past nine years, the challenges of getting JRuby to run on the JVM and, mm -hmm. and be compatible, uh, and then threaded that story through a few different areas that the JVM mm -hmm. is improving. And I think it went pretty well. People, yeah. people seem to appreciate the work that's being done. Yeah, and I mean, some, what are some of the examples? Like your JRuby is, is your uh, domain, but are you looking at strictly the JRuby aspects or how JRuby def uh, improves off of this or is it just general JVM stuff? That well, it's it's very it ends up being very general. Um, the the problems that we had to solve are problems that developers on the JVM have had to de deal with for a long time. Uh, the three areas that I actually went into, I talked about how Ruby has tons of method calls. I mean, everything's a method call all over the place. And using Invoke Dynamic, Java 7 features to optimize things a little bit better, make it possible for Ruby code to get some of the same JIT optimizations that Java does. Uh, we also had a, a strong need to be able to call native functions. There's a lot of Unix and POSIX stuff in, right. in Ruby that has to be essentially the same behavior. We could emulate all of it or port all that sort of code and all that logic, but it ends up being much more compatible and, and a better experience for users if we can call native code. Right. So we've worked for years on a native uh, integration library and some, some wrappers around that to, to pre-bind a bunch of POSIX functions, so, make it easy to you call them anytime. So does that would mean that it makes uh, JRuby on Windows even more accessible in because of the abstraction of those uh, system lib type calls. Right, right, exactly. So we're able to well, we're able to match Ruby's performance exactly the way that it would be on any given platform. Uh, so if there's platform specific quirks, not necessarily bugs or problems, but right. quirks in how file operations work or uh, quirks in how it, it deals with uh, unmanaged memory or native memory, uh, those things we can do without having to write any native code. Right. We just write a little bit of Java code, call through our native integration layer, JNR, and uh, we get the native, uh, native native behavior out of that. Interesting. And, you know, on a uh, side note, I, as we were talking about the JVM, it got to me thinking about some of the recent changes, and you may or may not have an answer, but uh, with uh, the recent changes in, in the .NET CLR now being launched on uh, OS X and Linux, and Microsoft seemed to make a push Mm. Uh, you know, there, there had been the Iron Ruby project that kind of died. Um, have you looked at, at the .NET stuff and, and looked at like how maybe JRuby might benefit from any of these uh, new advancements? Yeah, actually, uh, for a couple of years, uh, I, went, I went to the uh, Lang.net mm -hmm. event that Microsoft hosted, where they had language designers, runtime designers, VM folks all come to Redmond and meet up and talk about what they're doing. Uh, I went with John Rose and did a presentation. John Rose is the, the lead of the Hotspot compiler team. Um, we talked about basically how Hotspot works internally, what it's able to do optimization-wise. They were able to talk about things that they're doing in C Sharp and how they how it may make it work and how it fits into their VM. Uh, I really wish we had more of those events. Uh, there's no more Lang.net as far as I know. We still have the JVM Language Summit and get the C Sharp and, and Microsoft folks over there once in a while. And there's events like this that are you know, cross-discipline, cross-language. So it's, it's nice. I had a chance to talk with Mads a little bit earlier about some of the new C Sharp stuff. Yeah, it, and, and you, you might not think about like an event like this might bring together two disparate houses. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I don't know which. I've been watching Dune uh, a little bit too much lately, but uh, I'm thinking, you know, which one's House Harkonnen? <laughs> you know? yeah, and, uh, exactly. But, but uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say JVM is a trade, and we'll just leave it there, or maybe right. X. I don't know. But uh, it, it's it's good to see like some of these advancements, and it's good to know that there's cross pollination going on, even yeah, at definitely. a high level of, of people who are inside of the uh, the project. So right, right. Despite the perceived, uh, you know animosity between the two platforms. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, 
John John Rose, I think, mentioned it. He said uh, it's like going to a parallel universe right. when you go and talk to them. It's the same challenges and the same problems, and it just makes sense for us to all work together yeah. on them. So, actually, if that means that it's mirror mirror, you've got the goatee. So who's <laughs> yeah? Who's, who's the good me on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking that. We'll yeah. leave that as a mystery. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. 